Hello and welcome to Three Detail Stories, a brand new podcast for young children and parents looking for ways to entertain young children at bedtime, in the car, on a plane, in the checkout line, on a rainy day, or just on a regular day. I'm your host, Rosa Leiter. I am a mother of two, as well as a writer, musician, and teacher. The main voice you'll hear on this podcast, however, is my husband, Nicholas Leiter. He's a teacher, writer, carpenter, and connoisseur of stories. He came up with three detail stories as a way to wind down with the kids at bedtime. By the time I get the kids in their jammies, their teeth and hair brushed, I usually have just enough energy and brain power to read the kids their usual stack of books. But Nick enjoys challenges. A few years ago, when the kids would beg him to tell a story, and he exhausted all the true stories he knew, he asked the kids to pick three details for him to make up a story with. Then he spontaneously came up with a story, including those three details. He repeated the stunt the next night, and the next, and the next. Now it's ingrained in our bedtime routine, a perfect end to a long, busy roller coaster day. These stories aren't perfect, but they also aren't predictable, pretentious, or precious. They aren't edited or revised. They're recorded in a room where you might hear the cat getting antsy for her dinner. The kids shift around in creaky beds and blurt out questions from time to time. They're as raw and real as it gets. Without further ado, here's your invitation. It's bedtime at the Lighter House. Cozy up wherever you are and join the fun. Dad, I love your tacos. Thank you. There was so yummy. Mm. Oh, I know. A troll and a ghost and a bat. Ooh. A ghost and a bat? Once upon a time, there was a little family of trolls, and they were living in a little troll house, which was this cut out part of a stump of a tree. Inside, it was very cozy and very warm because it had a little wood stove in there. But the problem was, is that it was raining and cold and windy outside, and they didn't have anything to do and they had been inside for a very long time i bet they need to forage for food Mm -hmm. luckily inside the little tree they had also a little room in there that they called the root cellar which they had dug out in the roots of the tree where they kept a lot of food like nuts and vegetables and seeds and canned cucumbers Mm -hmm. maybe yeah pickles um, tomatoes? Tomatoes, yep. I bet they had mini pickles instead of our kind of... Stuff. Right, because they're trolls. Do they have any games? Yeah, they play, but the problem was, is they played all of their games so many times because it had been raining so much that they were bored of the games too. So they had to think of something else to do. So one of the troll children said, I think we should dress up like it's Halloween. And they said, that's a good idea. And then we should take pictures and we should make a whole photo album of those pictures just for the fun of it, just to remember this day and all of this rain and this time that we had to be inside for so long. And so that's what they did. They got all out all of their clothes and all of their costumes. And then they hung this big sheet up against the wall as a background so that they could take pictures up against this neutral background. And they all got dressed up. One of the kids dressed up as a bat and another dressed up as a uh, vampire and another dressed up as a clown. And they took a bunch of pictures and then they dressed up as princess and they dressed up as a cowboy and they dressed up as a werewolf and they took a bunch of pictures and they laughed and they laughed and they laughed and then they did one where they all dressed up in very fancy costumes and pretended that they were at a very fancy party that fun lasted the whole afternoon and they said now it's time to develop the pictures So they developed the pictures and they did it the old style way where they got a bunch of chemicals and they made the room very dark and they printed all of the pictures out on big pieces of paper. How did they do that? 
Yeah, it's a very kind of complicated process where you have to develop the negatives and then you have to put the negatives in a projector and shine light through it, almost like a movie, kind of a movie projector, but it's a still image and shine that image down on a piece of special paper and then put that piece of paper in chemical solutions that develop it so that that image shows up right on the paper. And then you have to hang them up to dry for a while. And so they did that. And by the time it was like 10 o'clock, it was so late. Finally, some of the images were about dry. And so they turned on the lights and they looked at the images. They were laughing and laughing until they got to some of the images and they saw that there was a ghost in there. And they said, who dressed up like a ghost? And one of the troll children said, not me. And the other said, not me. The other said, not me. I said, well, somebody had to dress up as a ghost. There's a ghost right there. And they looked at each other, wild-eyed. And they said, if nobody dressed up as a ghost, there was a ghost standing right next to us. They all screamed and screamed and screamed. Ah, but mom and dad just laughed and laughed and laughed. And they said, what are you laughing at? There's a ghost in our house. And then they undid a little rope that was tied along a, a little twig and let down by a pulley a sheet that looked just like a ghost that they had let down in the picture very quietly when they weren't noticing to what? catch the image. What? Just as a joke. So what did they do? They dropped down a, a sheet that looked like a ghost down into the picture when the kids weren't looking so that there would be a ghost in the picture when they developed the pictures. How did the rope do it? It was on a pulley. It's just like if I tied something to the ceiling and then put a rope through it and then I could pull it up to the ceiling and back down again. And they all laughed for a very long time, except you know what? The kids didn't really think it was that funny. The end. We've got one more story for you this week. If you enjoy 3D Tale Stories, please subscribe, leave us a short review, and share the podcast with other parents. Now for story number two. Read this. <laughs> it's time for the 3D tell story. Okay, so a bullseye and a slug. Okay, a turtle and robber. And a robber? Yeah. Once upon a time, there was a chipmunk who lived in a little wood pile. He had this very nice uh, studio apartment in this wood pile. Because in that woodpile, there was also a squirrel, a rat, and a family of mice that also had studio, studio apartments. Well, the family of mice had a two-bedroom. Also in the neighborhood, there was a turtle uh, that lived next to the pond, and there was a woodchuck. But one day, who should come tearing out of his studio apartment but Chipmunk? And he said... I've been robbed. I've been robbed. And everybody came and gathered around squirrel and the mice and rat and turtle and a bunch of insects and snails and all snake. There was a snake in the neighborhood. And they all said, what happened? Chipmunk said, I don't know. I woke up and all of my stuff was missing. I said, like what? Like my cabinet full of acorns, like the raisins I took from the family uh, that lives down the way. And the squirrel said, what family that lives down the way? What raisins? And Chipmunk said, never mind, squirrel, never mind. And they said, well, what are we going to do? I don't know. We better make sure that we lock up tight. And then the next night, who should come running out of their house but the family of mice and say, we've been robbed, we've been robbed. And I said, again? The robber strikes again? What, did, what happened? What'd you lose? And the mice said, we lost 
are cashew nuts? And the squirrel said, where did you get cashew nuts? And the mice said, never mind, squirrel. And we lost our breadcrumbs and we even lost our best Swiss cheese. And everybody said, oh no, the mice lost their Swiss cheese. Um, the, the squirrels that lost their acorns and squirrels love acorns. Mm-hmm. Maybe they ate them. They didn't. They said that they lost their acorns. I know, but maybe they accidentally woke up in the middle of the night and ate them. And so they decided that what they needed to do as a neighborhood was get together and defend themselves. And they said, but how are we going to do that? And you know who had the first idea? Chipmunk. Chipmunk had the idea. He said, I think we should build a bunch of bows and arrows and we should arm ourselves with bows and arrows. And everybody said, that's a good idea. And off they went to get sticks and some cordage and some very straight sticks for the arrows and feathers. And sure enough, they built a whole bunch of bows and arrows for everyone. And then Turtle said to Chipmunk, yeah, now the only thing we have to do is learn how to shoot them. And Chipmunk said, that's true. And so they built a bunch of targets. They built two big targets. And they built these targets out of straw that they gathered. And then a a face on it that they made out of birch bark. And they drew a big circle. And they set up the bullseyes. Did it the have a happy face on it? No, it was just a circle with c- circles inside, a very small circle on the inside with concentric circle. It's circles, it's called going out bigger and bigger and bigger. Like- and the little circle was the bullseye. They set up the targets out in the field. And it was actually Squirrel who showed everybody how to shoot the bows and arrows. And everybody tried over and over and they pulled them back and shot the arrows and most of them missed the targets. But then after a while, they started to get pretty good. I said, okay, now that we've all pretty good, I don't, I think maybe we should have an archery contest. And I said, yeah, that's a good idea. And so they made a birch bark list and they said, anybody who wants to enter the archery contest. You can put your name on the list and tomorrow we'll check the list and make a, a schedule. And so, okay. So they put a piece of birch bark up on the, on the tree, the common tree in the neighborhood and everybody signed up. And then when they woke up the next day, was anyone else robbed? No, nobody else was robbed. When they woke up the next day, the birch bark list was full and there was chipmunk on there and there was snake and there was turtle and there was squirrel and there was a, one of the uh, mice and there was rat. And then Daddy. at the very bottom, there was a slug. And they said, who is slug? And have you ever seen a slug fire an arrow before off a bow and arrow? And they said, oh, yeah, we don't think Slug is going to show up. Slugs can't fire a bow and arrow. So they made the list. And, of course, they had Slug was on the list. And so he was on the list. So they put him on the schedule. But nobody thought that Slug would show up. And first off was Chipmunk. And he fired a shot. And Chipmunk was very good. He fired almost a bullseye. It was, like, right on the edge. And Squirrel was pretty close. And Turtle was very close. And then, who should show up but Slug? And everybody turned and looked, and Slug just waltzed up. And when it was Slug's turn, he picked up a bow, and he brought the arrow back, and he fired a bullseye. Right in the middle? Right in the middle. And everybody went, oh. Everybody got together. I said, okay, round two, which was the final round. We need to uh, really pull ahead now. Uh, We can't let a slug win our archery contest, especially a stranger slug from a different neighborhood. The chipmunk was first, and chipmunk fired and just hit the bullseye right on the inside, and everybody cheered. And squirrel came pretty close, and snake 
hit a bullseye, but Snake Snake's first shot wasn't very good, but his second shot was a bullseye. And Slug said when it was Slug's turn, put one target in front of the other. And everybody looked at each other like, what is he up to? So they just did it. They put one target behind the second target about 10 feet back. And Slug did a very strange thing. He took a bunch of slug slime from his body and he slimed his arrow from the very tip all the way to the feathers. So it was glistening and all slimy. And then everybody hushed and he took his arrow and he pulled it back and he fired. And the arrow was so fast and so slimy that it went right through the first bullseye through the whole target and hit the second target right in the bullseye for a double bullseye. And everybody screamed. They had never seen anything like that. And even though they were sort of upset that nobody had won from their own neighborhood, they were very surprised by that performance. And so everybody huddled around him and they said, Slug, you know what? We had this archery contest because we had a robber. But we had so much fun with the archery contest that we kind of forgot about the robber. Do you think that maybe you could come around every once in a while and help us guard our neighborhood? And Slug said, of course I will. I would be honored. And everybody cheered and everybody thought that was a great end to a bad episode. A fun archery contest that ended with a bunch of people who were better at defending their own neighborhood. Um, so who was the... The end. Who was the robber? Who knows? Who was the robber? Don't know. You don't know who the robber is? No. But you made the story! I guess you were the robber. No. Well, I like raisins. Thanks for listening. See you next week. In the meantime, challenge your mommy or daddy to tell a three-detail story or make up your own. We are all storytellers. <laughs>